Thank you all for being here today. Uh, as you said, my name is Michael Glenn. I work for the Department of Public Health. I serve as the Assistant Administrator for the Northern District, which covers the 12 North Alabama counties from Coleman North. So it's, uh, we go from, uh, from Mississippi over to uh, Georgia, from Tennessee down to Coleman. So we, we see a lot of different things going on in the community, so we have a little perspective of, of the numbers. So I wanted to spend some time today just to put some numbers with the current crisis of what's going on and kind of give you an overview, not only nationally and not only state, but also what's going on uh, locally as well. Um, the America's opioid crisis right now is currently the deadliest um, drug epidemic in U.S. history. That's, a big, that's saying a lot. Um, last year, over 60,000 people died of drug overdose deaths. That was more people than died in the Vietnam War which is a sober statistic if you think about that number of people dying from opioid deaths. Um, those numbers are nearing the numbers that were seen in the 80s when the AIDS epidemic first came uh, on the scene, when, before there was actually good treatments out there available to those people that, were, that had that disease. So those numbers are getting to the point of that crisis that was back in the 80s. One of the biggest things to me that stands out is for the last two years, the overall life expectancy for U.S. citizens has declined for two years in a row. The richest country in the world with the most resources and our life expectancy has declined because of this crisis. So it's a, it's a huge thing and it doesn't just affect other families, it affects our families. And so it's something that we need to focus on. So just to kind of put it in perspective, um, Deaths per 100,000 in the population, you can see the death rate in the top five uh, states, West Virginia, Ohio, New Hampshire, uh, Washington, D.C., and Pennsylvania, has steadily increased from 2010 to 2016. Some of them at least doubled. Some of them had even tripled. Uh, Alabama currently ranks 35 on that, which is, I guess, a good thing. We're not number one in that category, but we are continually to rise as well over the last six years. You can see the statistics there of the deaths that are occurring uh, in our state. Um, just a few of the commonly prescribed opioids for, that are commonly uh, prescribed for pain. Uh, you'll have hydrocodone, which is commonly wartab, more and vicodin, uh, morphine, which you know as MS cotton, deoxy uh, cotton, Percocet, Dilaudid, and uh, the latest, biggest thing on the scene is fentanyl and car fentanyl, which is unbelievably powerful and causing a lot of destruction. Um, where are we getting these things from? Those people that are battling addiction, those people that first come into contact with it, where are those folks getting those prescription drugs that are not being prescribed for themselves? So non-medical uses, where are these folks getting that? If you can look, the first little graphic, it shows you um, in the first 30 days when somebody first starts trying, where do they come up with that? And it's given to them by a friend or a relative for free. So it's given to them just like, hey, I've got a backache. Well, here, take one of these, these help me. Wow, they do that. And so it starts from there. And you can kind of see the trend over the longer it goes, then they start going to the doctor, and then they start stealing, and then they start buying it from the drug dealers. And so it's a common thing to see these things. It starts out very innocently. Either a doctor prescribes it for, a very, for something that is very pertinent, or a family member or a friend gives it to you. Purple is a very pretty color, but not on this map. As you can see, um, in, the, in the southeastern and up in the Rust Belt, that's where the most prescriptions per person is, are being prescribed. And so you see in the southeast where we are in Alabama, we are in that top group, so we're overachievers for that. That's not a thing to brag about. Um, we are number one, not only in football, but in the number of prescriptions that are prescribed for each 100 people. So in Alabama, for every 100 people in our state, that boys, girls, men, women, and children, there are 121 prescriptions prescribed for every 100 people. Now you think about how many prescriptions you had this year. For me, I've never had one. And so that is unbelievable number of prescriptions that are being written in our state as a whole. Um, 2016, according to the CDC, the top 10 Alabama counties that um, for opioid prescription rates, you heard Matt talk about the, the study of the 4th Congressional District of us being, the, that congressional district being the most prescribed in the nation. Seven of those counties are in our district. You see in Walker County, 
Uh, there's 235 prescriptions for every 100 people in that county. That is unbelievable. And so you can kind of see the top three, Walker, Franklin, and Culver, all of those are getting over 200 prescriptions for every 100 people. And so that is unbelievable amount of medications being prescribed in those counties. Here's an interesting thing about the number of deaths, opioid related deaths as it stands to um, overall drug related deaths over the last few years. If you can see the first, uh, 2013, there were, oh, I'm sorry. There was 159 deaths and it jumped up to 260 opioid related deaths in the previous year. We believe that's mainly uh, related to the heroin, heroin related deaths. The next year it, did, it stayed kind of flat and then you see a big jump from 268 to 323 in uh, 2016 and that's when the fentanyl started coming on the scene where it was more and more so you can see the number of opioid related deaths and how they jump up when other things are introduced into the communities here are the number of overdose deaths by residents in alabama in the, in the selected counties and so you can kind of see in those counties where there is a large population uh, or a large proponent of uh, prescriptions being uh, prescribed there are a lot of deaths associated with those as well here's a screen we're talking about the antidote for those opioid related deaths in, in the naloxone um, administration here if you'll look at uh, Jefferson County in um, 20, 2016 there were 1783 doses of this rescuing drug administered in that one county alone that's over four doses per day every day of that year that is an amazing amount of people having um, overdose related things going on for our EMTs they are our first responders are on the scenes every day having to do these kinds of things and not only administering these drugs but also as fentanyl has started coming on the scene of them being uh, subjected to those things as well and what we're actually seeing uh, talking to the EMT folks is that one dose sometimes is not enough anymore so they're having to give multiple doses of this um, uh, medication to try to get them to counteract what's going on with these opioid related things so far and so I hope through these few little things here you can see that Alabama is in a crisis and so late last year Governor Ivey uh, got an opioid overdose addiction council and a task force together to try to come up with a, a department of mental health public health law enforcement and uh, our representatives and get them all together and start talking about what we can do to, to get this crisis under under hand here and so the opioid council had broke up into different committees talking about let's gather up some data and see where we are they wanted to get the prescribers and the pharmacists together and see what's going on with them what they can do got law enforcement on hand and then talk about treatment and recovery because we can't lock up enough people to get this stopped putting them in jail is not working we got jails full of drug addicts and we're still dying and so we can't lock up everybody and think that this is going to be done and so prevention and education is what we're trying to do here today uh get rescue for the watch loan and then get the community involved in those things and so governor ivy got an um, opioid action plan together and some of those action plans i was talking about prevention intervention treatment and the community's response to get us all on the same page and talking about those things so what are we talking about the top five priorities of her task force is to reduce reduce the supply we want to try to get the supply dried up and there's a two-pronged approach to that as well is so to modernize the, and enhance the prescription drug <laughs> monitoring program create it to make it more user friendly if i go to the, a new doctor today and he or she doesn't know me from anybody i go in and say i've got lower back pain and the only thing that works for me is ms cotton you know that i'll throw up a red flag especially if i'm brand new and that doctor can go into this uh, database and look and say well i've been to four other doctors that got prescriptions this week or to go to the pharmacist it's got an option to look in there and see if they've gone to three or four other pharmacies in the last week or two and got the same medication and so it's to get communication and start uh, uh, talking about it and so i hope to try to get the prescription part of it uh, down pat but also to talk about creating legislation to establish crimes of trafficking and fit on car fentanyl. Um, those drugs are so much more powerful and when this task force started off the current drug laws just didn't work for fentanyl four grams of fentanyl is an unbelievable amount four grams of heroin is a large amount but four grams of fentanyl will kill a whole lot of people and so our current laws wasn't effective and so the task force was to talk about that portion of it as well and then we thought to try to develop a centralized data repository so that if we see something going on in marshall county or jackson county or madison county 
that the law enforcement and, and all of us can team up and go and see what's actually going on in there if there's a rash of things going on in those one counties. And so that's hopefully going to be uh, something that comes comes to pass before long. Reduce overall deaths through access to these drugs that, are, that can counteract these drugs. Uh, Senator Gerald Dow got a grant uh, with, with some distributors. They got some uh, medications on the street and, and some people from the Department of Public Health. Senator Dial's office came around to the, to the local um, EMS responders and did a training with them and gave them some of those some of that medication out. And I think that before our meeting today, we talked about Jefferson County doing that through the health department. And hopefully we can do something like that locally uh, before long as well and get that, get that medication out to the first responders of those people who need it. And talking about that as well, um, March of this year, our state health officer, Dr. Scott Harris, uh, gave a standing order for this medication at the pharmacy that if you uh, have a loved one or you yourself are battling those things, you can take that standing order to the pharmacy and fill it out and they can prescribe this naloxone for you to have at home. And so that's something that's available as well that you can print out. Um, implement prevention and education strategies through uh, techniques to create, to create greater community awareness and participation. We need everybody working together in order to find an answer to this difficult problem and then improve access to care. That's a big thing. So after we find these people that are having a problem, what do we do with them? 